I'm Shaza and welcome to Park Views. A US military expert claimed that explosives were allegedly used to attack a Japanese owned oil tanker near the Strait of Hormuz, which bore a striking resemblance to limpet mines that was publicly displayed by Iran. Some experts say that the attack on two ships last week, as well as rocket attacks targeting U.S. installations in Iraq, appear designed to roil Washington and up the cost of its hardline Iran policy. Iran has denied being involved after the attack that hit the Japanese tanker last week. It remained unclear why the U.S. military is investigating an attack on two foreign-owned vessels carrying non-U.S. goods between non-U.S. destinations. Fear of war between the United States and Iran have intensified after a U.S. drone was shot down by Iranian forces. Washington and Tehran disputed the circumstances of the drone shoot down with Iran saying that a spy plane was shot down after it encroached on Iranian airspace. But the U.S. said the aircraft was hit over international territory. The incident marked the first direct Iranian claimed attack on U.S. assets and came, and came amid heightened tension. Unleashed by U.S. President Donald Trump's decision last year to withdraw from an international accord that curbed Tehran's nuclear program. According to the reports, Trump has blocked legislation that would put sanctions on U.S. arms sales to key Middle Eastern ally Saudi Arabia. The move marks the third time where Trump has used his ability to veto and follows an earlier veto of a Saudi Arabia-related measure. In a statement, Trump said, the resolution would weaken America's global competitiveness and damage the important relationships we share with our allies and partners. In May, Trump's administration invoked an emergency provisions in order to push through 22 deals with Saudi Arabia. The president argued that the move was necessary in order to defend against heightened tension with Iran. Although the U.S. and Saudi Arabia are allies, the recent killing of Jamal Khashoggi drew fury from Congress. Recently, tensions in the Middle East have come close to boiling over as Tehran and Washington have continually clashed. It was also the latest in an escalating series of incidents in the Gulf since mid-May, including suspected attacks on six tankers and has promoted inter-alarm that the standoff could escalate into an open confrontation. Both sides are engaged in making risky moves, testing each other's resolve without knowing the limits, which raises the chances of a miscalculation, given that both cannot afford to be seen as making concessions or giving ins. In the event of a series, enough incident initiated by either side, retaliation is certain. While Washington and Tehran seemingly do not want war, their brinkmanship is leading them in a very direction they are trying to avoid. Since it's pulled out from the nuclear agreement in May 2018, the Trump administration has been tightening the news around the Iran's neck, hoping to force it back to the negotiation table. In November 2018, it reimposed sanctions on Iran's oil sector. The Trump administration is clearly pushing for Iran to be isolated like Iraq in 1990s when Saddam Hussein's regime was only able to buy food and medicine in exchange for oil. The Iranian economy has been hit badly by these measures, with infl inflation skyrocketing and the currency plunging into a record low against the US dollars. To back economic and diplomatic efforts to pressure Iran, the Trump administration has also increased its military presence in the Middle East. It has sent reinforcement to Navy forces stationed in the region and deployed a MIM-104 Patriot missile battery in the Gulf. Over the past two months, the Pentagon has also boosted its ground forces in the region with 2,500 additional troops for defensive purpose. This show of force, while indeed a worrying sign, may be motivated by a domestic consideration of the current administration. Some in Washington believe that the failure to back economic sections with military forces in dealing with North Korea was the reason why the Trump administration failed to reach a denuclearization deal.
With presidential election just a year and a half away, Donald Trump cannot afford another foreign policy. Iran, for its part, is also trying to put pressure on the U.S., both diplomatically and militarily. The Islamic Republic knows it cannot survive for long without oil revenue. As a result, it might be seeking a confrontation with the U.S., which is limited enough in scope as not to cause an all-out war, but also significant enough to boost its image among the general public at home and put pressure on Washington to reconsider its position. The problem with the current situation is that, while confrontation and war seems increasingly possible, there are clear paths that, lead, that leads to de-escalation and negotiation. This is because of the unattainable concessions that the Trump administration has vowed to achieve from Iran. Iran's Defense Minister General Amir Hatami dismissed the claim, however, telling reporters that when Iran shot down a U.S. drone last month, it shared images of the wreckage to verify it. I officially declared that no Iranian or IRGC drone has been targeted or shot down. Major General Hussein Salami told reporters that I strongly assert that it is a big lie and we have proved it too. We have proved whatever we have done, and the enemies should prove their claim as well. The question that arises is that, who will secure the Strait of Hormuz? In sign that the Iranian government could be trying to ease the boiling tensions in the Gulf, Tehran declared that Iranian forces intended to secure the Strait of Hormuz to prevent any disturbance in shipping. Though the vital, through the vital waterway, the narrow strait is the gateway from the Persian Gulf into the rest of the world's ocean. And about a fifth of the global oil supply passes through it every year. Tension in the Gulf water was precipitated by a standoff over the fate of the nuclear deal agreed by Tehran and other world powers in 2015. Washington wants to renegotiate the nuclear deal, removing problematic parts and including the Iranian ballistic missile program and its regional activities. But the Islamic Republic views concessions on these issues as a potential threat to its survival. Yet, Iran is unlikely to accept giving up its nuclear program for life, as it has become the matter of national pride. At the same time, Washington demands that Tehran surrender its ballistic missile program, which currently allows it to hit targets across the Middle East and perhaps as far as Southeast Europe. The problem is that the Iranian regime views its missile capabilities as its main deterrence too. Given its weak conventional forces, it attack if attacked. Iran can attack vital installations in Saudi Arabia and other GCC countries, such as oil refineries, hydroelectric power plants, and water desalination systems. Having seen what happened to Iraqi President Saddam Hussein after agreeing to U.S. demands to disarm, the Iranian leadership would never make the same mistake. Furthermore, Iran would not agree to give up its regional ambitions. Uh, after the end of the Iran-Iraq war in 1988, Tehran adopted a new military doctrine which aims to move the war into enemy territories and never fight on Iranian soil again. It views its military involvement and proxy operation in Iraq, Syria, Yemen and Lebanon as a way to keep confrontation away from its border. It is increasingly clear that Washington's maximum pressure strategy will not force Iran to surrender. Both sides also cannot afford a war either, and the status quo is unsustainable. Particularly for Iran, Iran's geopolitical location between Asia's rising powers, that is, India, China, and Russia, its regional weight and massive energy resources make it of utmost importance for the U.S. as well as its contenders. The European Union said the weekend meeting of China, Russia, Britain, France, and Germany would examine issues linked to implementation of the nuclear deal in all its aspects. The U.S. hasn't commented on the upcoming summit, but Iranian President Hassan Rouhani said that he was open to negotiation with the White House if they did not mean surrender. 
It was in the first time Rouhani has indicated that he would be open to talks with Mr. Trump's administration and the US president has said repeatedly that he would like to hammer out a new deal with Tehran. But the decision on whether to return to talks belongs to Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khomeini, who in previous months said Iran would not repeat what he called the bitter experience of negotiation with the United States after Mr. Trump's reversal of previous policy. Riyadh has recently hinted heavily that it's willing to negotiate with Iran. Two weeks ago, its UN ambassador Abdullah al-Mulami said that even though Iran's behavior is liable to undermine international peace and stability, we stress that we are willing to have relations of full cooperation between the Arab states and Iran on two fundamental conditions that this cooperation be based on good neighborliness and non-intervention by Iran in other countries' international affairs, while respecting their sovereignty. This was a new tone from Riyadh and was greeted accordingly in Tehran. We welcome these statements and we think they should be also accompanied by action, said by an Iranian government spokesman Ali Rabi. We have always called for stability and security for the region's state and we respect bilateral relationship and securities agreements. This public exchange between Iran and Saudi Arabia comes as Washington is trying to forge its own diplomatic track with Tehran. According to The New Yorker, U.S. President Donald Trump invited Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif to meet with him at White House, but Tehran rejected the invitation, saying it doesn't want to give Trump a photo op for public relation purposes. If so, Iran would be willing to immediately implement the additional protocol of the nuclear non-expansion treaty, which was supposed to go in effect in 2023. This protocol allows for closure and more frequent monitoring of the nuclear facility covered by the nuclear deal. For now, Washington has rejected this offer, but given Trump's declared desire to launch a diplomatic process, a more flex flexible version of the Iranian offer might serve as a basis for new negotiation. Abdul Khaliq Abdullah, a former advisor to UAE's crown prince who remains close to the country's government, recently said the war in Yemen has ended from the UAE's perspective. All that's left is to announce it officially. Granted, he, ho he holds no official position and doesn't represent the government, but his statement seems to reflect the views not only of Abu Dhabi, but also of Riyadh. Donald J. Trump now has the opportunity for the deal of the century with a better chance of success than the one he has proposed for Israel and Palestinians. If the leader of North Korea has become his dear friend, Iranian Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khomeini is surely an even more important asset. This is all for now. Until next time, take care. Goodbye.